Okay, we are now looking at what <laughs> what are non-planar graphs. Okay, so yeah, we're going to look at it in a different way than the, what the book does. We're going to prove a few theorems and then we're going to really dig deep into it. But let's see. For the complete graphs, Kn, we would like to be able to say something about the number of vertices or edges and if the graph is planar. In other words, uh, sorry, yeah, and its faces if it's a planar graph. Let's first consider K3. How many vertices does K3 have and how many edges? Well, we can quickly draw a K3. A K3 is a complete graph with three vertices. There we go. It has three vertices, three edges, edges, and it divides it into two regions. We've already considered that graph before. Okay, let me just move up so you can see what I've just drawn. There we go. Okay, so how many edges does it have? Three. How many vertices? Three. If K is planar, how many faces should it have? Well, it should have two faces. Then they want us to repeat it for quite a few more graphs. We're not going to do that now. We are going to see what they say that's important for what we want to do. We're not going to do the proof yet. Okay, so not all graphs are planar, they say. If there are too many edges and too few vertices, very important, the pigeonhole principle. There's too many edges, meaning it's too many pigeons and too few vertices too few holes the pigeonhole problem then some of the edges will need to intersect okay the first time this happens is in the k5 graph now we're going to talk about that later on okay so if you try and redraw the k5 graph it's a connected complete connected graph here in such a way that it does not um, have edges that intersect. I think we dealt with that one in our previous video. Yes. How many of no, we've dealt with the, with K6? We looked at six of our vertices. Then we, let me just make 100% sure. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. We've dealt with one that had six vertices and six edges. Okay, this one has five with five edges. Okay, so let us have a look. We don't, we're not going to have a look at that yet. We are going to start our lesson by looking at a few additional things that we want to put in place so we can use them to prove what we want to prove. Okay. We're going to start our journey into non-planar graphs by putting a few things in place. The first thing is a lemma that comes directly from Euler's formula. Now remember Euler's formula worked with a connected graph and a connected planar graph or plane graph. Okay, now we're going to work with a disconnected graph. So we might have three vertices together and a vertex lying down there on the other side or two graphs with two separate um, where there's no bridge connecting the two okay so if G is a plane graph so it's still a plane graph meaning there's no edges that are crossing with so many G of C connected components then Euler's formula adjusts itself to this so the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of regions is 1 minus the number of components or uh, connected components. Okay, so let's just draw a graph. I'm going to draw any graph here. 1, 2, 3, 4 vertices. Let's weigh one in there and let's put another one in there. So 1, 2, 3. This is one graph. That looks like that. Okay, so how many regions are there? Oh, sorry, that's the one part of the graph. And let's just draw another one. Let's do something that like, looks like this. So that is one graph 
with no bridge connecting them so it's a disconnected graph but it's still one graph okay so if I now count the number of vertices in this graph 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so there's 11 vertices the number of edges in my graph 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 edges okay and then the number of regions that's created by this particular graph now remember the region on the outside of the graph let's say that's region 1 then we have region 2 region 3 region 4 region 5 region 6 region 7 so the number of regions in this graph is 7 now how many connected parts are there there's two connected parts so CG is indeed Two. Now let's see if this holds true. V minus E plus F is equal to what? It's equal to 11 minus 15 plus 7. So 11 minus 15 plus 7. 11 plus 7 is 18 minus 15 gives 3. And what is 1 plus the number of connected components to this graph? Well, it's 1 plus the number of connected components is 2, so that is indeed 3. So this holds true for our graph over here. Okay, now folks, you can try quite a few of them um, by yourself, and you'll see that that will always hold true. So the next concept I'm going to look at is the notion of a maximal planar graph. What is a maximal planar graph? Well, if we start with any graph, let's just start with a graph that has four vertices. Or let's make it five. Let's make it a connected graph because a planar graph has to be connected. And it's still, it also doesn't have any sides crossing or edges crossing one another. Okay, so if we draw that graph, and we start adding more edges to this graph. So I can add, so uh, how must I add the edges? I must add the edges so that it remains a planar graph. So I can add an edge there. I can add another edge here. Still nothing is crossing. I can add that edge over there. And I can add another edge over there. Okay, so I have added effectively one, two, three, four, five edges. Can I add another edge? Well, if I add that one, it crosses. If I want to connect these two vertices, they're going to cross. So then it won't be a planar graph anymore. Now, what I have here is what I call a maximal planar graph. So it's a graph that was planar to start off with. Okay, what have I done? I've added the maximum number of edges that I can so that the graph still remains planar. So where the black graph was initial, that is the initial planar graph. This is a form of a maximal planar graph. Now remember for the initial graph, we had two regions. We had the region formed by that little quadrilateral and then the region on the outside. Now look at how many regions I have now. I have region 1, region 2, region 3, region 4, and region 5. Okay, initially, let's go for the initial values. Initially, the number of vertices I had was 5. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 edges. The number of edges was 5. And the number of regions were 2 was the region inside there and then the region on the outside. Okay, so what do I have now? I still have the same number of vertices 
okay? But the number of edges and the number of regions have changed. So every time I add an edge, I added an extra region. So let's see, what do I have? The number of regions, I now have six regions. Don't forget about the one on the outside. So F here uh, is becoming six. There's still five vertices and the number of edges I have is one, two, three, four, five to start with, six, seven, eight, nine. The number of edges I have increased. Okay? So it's a maximum planar graph. It's also it's a maximum plane graph, which is also a maximum planar graph in this case. All the boundaries of this graph, very interesting. All the boundaries. Let me see. No, I'm not going to highlight that. Let's just look at them. All the boundaries of every region forms a triangle. In other words, it has three edges. Edge 1, edge 2, edge 3. 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 1, 2, 3. Okay, so every region in here is formed by three vertices and three edges. And we call that triangulation. Okay, now if you look at the region outside even, let's see. It's got one vertex, two vertex, three vertex. Even the region on the outside can be represented by a triangle. Okay, so this is a fact. All the boundaries of this graph will always, in a maximal planar graph, will always form triangles, including its exterior. And what do we call that? We call that triangulation. Okay, so let's see. I've got quite a bit of time here. So let us look at another graph. An initial graph with, let's say, yeah, there's six vertices. So one, two three, four, five, six. The vertex set is six. The edge set is six. And let's just say that's all we had. So we had a region that made up of two specific different regions. Now I start adding edges without doing crossings. So I've added three. I can now do those two there. I can add those two over there, connect them, and I can connect that. I think we've reached our maximum here. So that's the maximal planar graph that I could have drawn from the initial plane graph. Let's see, the number of vertices stay the same. Interesting. Yeah, that will always be the case. Why? Because you're not adding vertices, you're adding edges. So you're connecting already. Um, present vertices. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The number of edges I have is 12. The number of regions is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 regions that I have formed. So that there is the idea of a maximal planar graph that we want to work with. Okay, so we now want to prove a theorem about maximal planar graphs. And that theorem says the following. If G is a maximal planar graph with V vertices and V is bigger than or equal to 3, okay, and E edges, then the number of edges can be found by taking the number of vertices, multiplying it by 3, and subtracting 6 from that number. So what is G? Let me just change this paper uh, for us. I'm going to put my paper over there, and I'm going to get a clean piece of paper out. So I'm just going to fold this so that we have a big enough page to write on. So there we go. There's our theorem that we want to prove. Let's just analyze what it is indeed saying. It's saying it's a maximal planar graph, which then would mean 
that it must have or it will have that's the second condition vertex, vertex numbers bigger than 3 if and E edges so then E edges is 3 times the vertices minus 6 so we can find the number of edges if we know the number of vertices okay so let's have a look at this proof well the first thing we're going to say is we have to take a plane drawing of G okay the graph G with F regions okay that's what we are going to consider the boundary for each one of these reason read but that's my dogs the boundary for each one of these regions will be a triangle so the boundary reads for each region will be a triangle now what does that mean it means the vertex set for something to be a triangle the vertex set must either be three or be more than three so that explains what we've got as a condition over here okay so now if we take the following we take the sum of all the regions are as related to the number of edges in the boundary of that region okay so in the boundary of the region R so if there's 20 regions then we'll have each re region as a triangle so we'll have 60 but now remember some of those regions are adjacent to each other like in a previous case that we've looked at here okay so that edge was counted twice that edge was counted twice so where regions are connected they are connected through a particular vertex vertices and an edge okay so we want to take this sum um, and that sum will equal to three times the number of regions okay which in this case is F now what do we have on this side over here on this side we've got the sum of all the regions or the number of edges in the boundaries of the regions and we're saying on the right hand side there are F reg regions so this is F regions made up with three edges each okay so that's what we've got at the moment so on the left hand side each edge gets counted twice since it's a boundary between two regions so just to give an example if this was what your regions were looking at what we were looking at then this is counted twice that's counted twice and it continues over there that's counted twice so every one of those sides are counted twice okay so what do we have the sum of this will be then twice the number of edges because I've double counted every edge and there we have a relationship between the regions and the number of edges okay so what do we know we know that this is definitely the case okay so what do I want to I want I'm working towards a statement about the edges so I'm gonna say that F is 2 over 3 times the number of regions is 2 thirds the number of edges okay and then I'm gonna go to Euler's rule and see if that is the case so what do I now get if I have since it's a planar graph of course it is we know that this is true that's Euler okay 
That is true because we're working with a planar graph, not just a special, special one, a maximal planar graph here. Okay, so if we start hoing things in here, then we get the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus 2 over 3e is equal to 2. Now, those of you who know me knows I hate working with fractions. So I'm going to take that fraction and I'm going to get rid of it straight away. So I multiply by 3. 3v minus 3e plus 2e is equal to 6. Okay, we want to say something about the number of edges. So we have minus e is equal to 6 minus 3v. And just rearranging or hoing the, the negatives away, dividing by a negative, e is 3v minus 6. So indeed, there is the, the number of edges in a maximal planar graph can be found if we know the number of vertices. Okay, so we have shown that. If G is a maximal planar graph with V vertices, where V is more, e less, or bigger than equal to 3, um, the number of edges is E minus 3 V, or uh, E equal to 3 V minus 6. Okay, that we did by our little proof that we have over there. We've got one more proof to do before we can look at the two things that are important in this chapter. I'm going to get the other proof ready for us. Okay, we're ready. We're going to now look at what happens. It's a corollary that comes from the previous theorem. Remember the previous theorem was true for where is the theorem for a maximal planar graph? What we're doing now is we're saying, what if it's not a maximal planar graph? So all it's doing is saying, if G is a planar graph with V vertices and E edges, there's still this, this condition on the vertices, then E is small and equal to 3V minus 6. So let's see how that works. If we take a graph... G and add edges to G such that the resultant graph G prime we're going to call that graph is a maximal planar graph Okay, so we've got two graphs. We've got the initial graph, then we've got G prime. Well, how's G prime formed? It's formed by adding edges until we get to a maximal planar graph that we need to work with. Okay, and that graph will have E prime edges. Okay, so what can we immediately say here? We can say that the number of edges in the new graph is more than the number of edges in the initial graph. Okay, so just something to bear in mind that this is definitely the case here. Why? Because we've added edges for the new graph. Okay, so what can we say? Then E prime will then equal by our previous theorem 3V minus 6. Okay? That was proven. That has just been proven. Okay? So, with this bearing this in mind, we can say... Now, the number of vertices did not change. Remember, we only changed the edges. So, we can say that E, which is small or equal to E prime, is therefore equal to 3V minus 6. Now, if we get rid of the E prime here, then we can say the number of edges in the original graph, which wasn't a maximal planar graph, has got to be less than, so there's a boundary that we're putting in place here, 3v minus 6. So we're saying, if it was a maximal planar graph, the number of edges will be three times the number of vertices minus 6. If we only have a planar graph, 
then we're putting an upper boundary on that. The number of edges ha will be less than three times the number of vertices minus um, the six that they, they, they have over here. So it's the previous formula, and we just bring that condition into it. Okay, so we are ready now to start looking at our non-planar graphs. Okay, so in my next video, we're going to be looking at, let me just see if I've done everything I've wanted to do. Yeah, why K5 is not planar. Um, yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll look at something else that we need to put in place before we can then prove that the com connected K33 graph, the complete connected graph K33 is also not planar. Okay, folks, if you've liked this video and you've learned something useful about your graph theory, please like the video and please join, subscribe to my channel. I will continuously be putting things on this channel for you to look at.